They were looking for uh, Thanksgiving songs. Um, do you know off the top? I mean, I didn't ask you about this earlier, so I am kind of putting you on the spot. Do you know of a George Strait Thanksgiving song? Can you ask him first if he knows what song this is? Because I, I was hear it. it. Oh, I just said the name of the song. <laughs> and I'll be drinking again. Can you hear that one? And thinking whenever he calls. Barely. Uh, it's chill of an it chill of an early fall. I had okay. never heard this I song did, before I today. Hear it well enough to know. It's the yeah. first track off his album of the same name, hmm. from yeah. 1991. Well, there's just so many good ones. Yeah. Uh, how about how about a how about a, a Garth Brooks? And this is this would be. Uh, I don't know if it's Thanksgiving or not, but how about unanswered prayers? That's a great one. Uh, okay. It is a good one. You plan on, Are you going to plan on attending the Garth Brooks concert, Clay? I think we just lost him. I nope. just lost the sound out of my left ear here. There, now he's back. Sounds yep. like he might be back. You going to go to the concert, Clay? When uh, I know tickets are on sale, like uh, what of a couple of weeks, if less than that. You better be quick with the uh, with the yeah. With the I mean, card. I would like to, but it you know we'll see how it works out. There's a lot of things going on in the spring. Uh, you know. Spring football magazine production. There's a lot of things that are going on. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. But that that would be an entertaining concert. He is above anything else a showman. And uh, I just I think the world of Garth Brooks and no, uh, you know, have a lot of mutual friends. Don't know him, but because of my time in Oklahoma, there's a lot of people that that I know that you know kind of brushed across his life and and. Uh, one of my buddies gave him his first gig. He was uh, president of Stillwater First National Bank, and Garth was a javelin thrower at Oklahoma State. Hmm. And they needed a Christmas singer for their just their company Christmas party, you know, a little small gig. And they had a booking agent uh, in Oklahoma City that told them that there was a young singer that they could get for a nice price that was just getting started that was probably worth it. And so they hired they hired Garth Brooks. He was still on the on the track team, and he showed up with his guitar and sang. You know, he sang covers. He didn't sing any of his songs, but uh, they were pretty sure that he would make it. <laughs> he was, wow! He was a delightful young man, is the way they described it. That's awesome. That's all. I'd love to go to that show. The only thing I bummed out about is that baseball's at Texas A and M that day. So mm. I saw him in Memphis, and he did two shows in one day in Memphis. Oh, he ended up doing like six shows in like four oh, days. Oh, yeah, over that, a few days. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still couldn't get a ticket. Hey, Clay, there's, um, I, I wanted to ask about uh, Cecil Hurt. Yeah. Uh, it's a guy that we'd had mm-hmm. on the show before the season started, a, a, a very well known and highly respected uh, columnist, sports editor at the Tuscaloosa News. And, you know, know the Alabama Crimson Tide inside and out, passed away yesterday. I'd read it was from pneumonia, age of 62. And, uh, I would imagine that you'd, you'd come across Cecil quite a few times. Yeah, Cecil's health had declined, you know, through the years, and he, you know, he battled some some issues health wise that just made it tough. And you know, we all knew it, and you know, we were all thankful when we did get to see him because there there were you know stops and starts in there of late, um, and he was talked about much uh, in the press box Saturday because it was clear that. He wasn't going to last very many more days, uh, just because of the condition in the hospital that he was in. In, but I, I will, I will give you uh, one of my favorite Cecil Hurt stories. And this is through my brother Butch, who was managing Crimson Tide Sports Net- Network. In other words, the advertising mechanism that that fueled the radio show for the coaches, the coaches' shows, and all that. And uh, he often was with the basketball coach, and Cecil sometimes was with him. You know, like just before the – I guess they were playing at South Carolina, and Dave Odom was the South Carolina coach. And Alabama had won. And the losing coach goes first in the in an interview room, and Butch and Mark Gottfried and Cecil Hurt were standing in the hallway waiting for – and, you know, Cecil would go and take in his seat, but he was trying to get a few things from, from Gottfried. And Odom went on and on and on, just, and it was, you know, monotone stuff that mm-hmm. no, nobody was writing down. And and they weren't even, they couldn't hear it really in the hallway, other than that he was still talking. 
And Godfrey's like, well, what in the world could you be still talking about? And Cecil, just with a sharp tongue, quick wit, you know, this was not, you know, for anybody else's consumption, but he said, he's up there trying to explain how he didn't go to the Final Four at Wake Forest and he had Tim Duncan for four years. <laughs> that would take a long time to describe, yeah, wouldn't would. it? That's well said. That's well yeah. said. I mean, and that was just Cecil. You know, and it, you know that never appeared in print or anything, but, it, but just his... He had a quick wit and a sharp tongue, and it, and it was... And he could... You know, the good ones can say a lot in a few words, and he could do that too. You know, his stuff didn't have to be terribly long to be quality. And and uh, he he was an icon, legend, however you want to say it. And he, you know, he's a was a big solid dude. But I will just say this: he cast a large shadow. I mean, everything he wrote was consumed. Just you know. The people of Alabama loved to read Cecil Hurt, and he he told them what he they wanted to hear. And of course, there was a lot of good stories to write at Alabama in his career. I don't know how many national championships he covered, but it was a bunch. So, uh, R.I.P. Cecil Hurt. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We had we enjoyed having him on. He was really thoughtful and oh you know, yeah, made, made a lot of really good points about Alabama. And he had a couple of he had a, he made us laugh a couple of times as well, which just sounds just like mm. like it was with most people. Um, I want to ask you what your impressions are two years into his job of Eliah Drinkwitz. A lot of people think he's a little too brash for somebody that's been a head coach for a short period of time. Um, I would just assume you'd expect somebody to be who they are. And I don't know. He seems like he's a little bit brash. What's your impression of Eli Drinkwitz as Mizzou's head coach? He seems like he likes to live on the edge. I mean, and I'm talking about with his coaching. You know, he's he's uh, uh, he, you know, he has. Uh, I think he's got a clever mind offensively. You know, I'm not crazy about so far what they've done defensively, although they may be a little better now. But uh, you know, he he's an offensive coach. Players seem to like him. The ones that get to play, <laughs> you know, that's always I, you always have to have an have an asterisk there because the ones that don't get to play never like to coach, right? And you know that's that's uh, obvious. Uh, but it's uh, he, you know, I don't think he's had his defining moment at Missouri yet. In that, you know, they won some games, but they're nondescript games. You know, there there's not anything that you say, wow, this is. Uh, you know he's going to make it, or he's not going to make it. You know, there. I mean, there's not been a defining moment that says he can't survive in the SEC, but there hasn't been one that says he can. Yeah, well, he certainly dove headfirst into the battle line rivalry because of, uh, you know, what he what he said uh, over the summer at SEC media days. You know, and there's just I don't know if there's a, is if there's that there's got to be no other two coaches in the SEC that are as different as as these two are in the way that they approach these kind of things. Like, you're never going to get bulletin board material if you're an opposing coach from Sam Pittman. He just doesn't talk. He doesn't talk like that. I think with Eliah Drinkwitz, like, he and Dan Mullen were the perfect foils for each other. And what's happened in the last few days has been uh, entertaining in a way. But Sam Pittman just, he's never going to give you that stuff. Well, you'd have to say that he's an older coach. He's not a spring chicken, right? Um, and he does it the old school style. I mean, he's going to do it with physicality. He's going to do it with uh, hard work, uh, toughness. And he's he's going to do it the old school way when he gets in front of a microphone. He, it's going to be uh, it's going to be him. Uh, which you know that's great. You get the snapshot of what him. He doesn't try to to be anybody else, but. Because that's the way it is, it's going to come across is, well, you're aching for some bulletin board material. You're going to have to look somewhere else because mm-hmm. that's I, I'm I know enough not to do that. Well, they really struggle defensively, especially against the run. Opponents are averaging 234 yards per game against Mizzou. So, I mean, Arkansas is going to try to run it against you no matter what. But they got an opening here. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little better of late. Uh, that, that, and it might be just by nature of who they've played, but I, you know, 
Arkansas is going to try to run against everybody. They tried against Alabama, and I think the game called for passing. You know, when you're behind, you, you, you're going to have to score. You can't uh, you can't spend too much time with the running game. Uh, but it, yeah, I think that I think if they effort the running game, they'll probably uh, find some good results, right? Well, I would certainly hope so, and I think they expect to. I definitely think they expect to. All right, we'll step aside just a moment here and have Clay in the next segment. Halftime brought to you by Williams Tractor in Fayetteville, Berryville, and Bobcat of Northwest Arkansas. They invite you to come out and see the new RF Series fixed chamber round balers from New Holland. They're simple, simple, tough, and affordable, and will help it make easy to create quality bales in a wide range of conditions. Perfect choice for smaller livestock farms, sundowners, and rural lifestylers. And Williams Tractor can help you choose from three models, one for 4x4 bales. They have two for 4x5 bales, and they also feature 0% financing offers or cash discounts. RF Series round balers, modern productivity, proven simplicity. Call or come by Williams Tractor in Fayetteville, Berryville, and Bobcat of Northwest Arkansas today. Halftime with Clay Henry, right back after this. To the top of the hour here. Uh, Clay, Arkansas trying to win a third trophy and end a losing streak to uh, an opponent that you got to be frustrated with. Now, obviously, the losing streak to Alabama stretches it to 15. You've ended losing streaks to LSU and to Texas A&M. And I don't think anybody... I, I mean, I understand the frustration with the losing streak to Texas A&M, but I think the one that really sticks in everybody's craw more than anything else is five straight losses to Missouri. Because Arkansas believes, and I think they should properly believe, that Missouri's just not a program that should win five in a row against Arkansas. Well, you can say that, but you can also, you know, be aware that when Missouri came into the league, they were they were riding a pretty good high mm-hmm. in, the, in the history of their program, and they, they had done well in the in the uh, in the Big Twelve. Uh, you know. Chase Daniels and that crew, they won a lot of games. And, you know, they, they had uh, uh, enough talent that they, you know, they skated through the East a couple of years too, right? Went to Atlanta. So I, I don't, uh, don't want to diss them too much because, I, I, you know, I've got respect for their football program. And when you say, well, where, where is Arkansas? Well, you know, if you want to look in the recent past, it hadn't been very good. They would have – they've got – Five game losing streaks to other teams too, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, some that you would think, "Oh, I would like to have a shot at them every year," and you're losing. So you got to fix your program, and that's what they've gone about doing. And I think that that's uh, you know that they should have won last year. I, you know, I, I think when you've got the lead with just mere seconds to go, you should win. Uh, if they play well, they'll win this this game, in my opinion. Oh, they're they're heavily favored. I mean, that's uh, that's hasn't been a line like that in this game in a while. Clay, as far as for Arkansas heading into the final week of the regular season, uh, uh, updates on on health wise. You know, got, some people got kind of banged up over the last few weeks. Uh, how healthy is Arkansas coming in this game, especially you know with, with uh, especially Traylon Burks? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm the wrong guy to ask about injuries. You probably haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, hey, the, I think if Burks is uh, upright, he'll play in this mm-hmm. game. I mean, I think he knows this is probably his last go in in Fayetteville, and, he, you know, he'll give it a good good try. And he's, uh, I, you know, I'll just go by what Sam said, uh, you know, yesterday, you know, what was it, Monday, mm-hmm. that uh, – He'll be fine, and he's been beat up all year, so it's probably not he, – he wasn't going to magically get well. And I think everybody's got bumps and bruises. And I think I bet if, if you ask Tyler Beatty, he's got, you know, the, the great Missouri running back, he's got bruise on top of bruises at this point. So, yeah, if you've been tackled and if you've hit, uh, you know, sometimes when you watch safeties play late in the year and you think, hey, he's not tackling very good, it's because his shoulders are – you know, or deadened. <laughs> it's not, mm-hmm. don't, doesn't have any feeling in his arms. So just the nature of what SEC football is in November. Two guys that I think mean a lot, not only to this program, but to 
the fan base and to the community uh, of the natural state that will be playing their last game at Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium this Friday in, in Trailenburgs and, and Grant Morgan. When, when you think about those guys, you know, five years down the road and you kind of think back about their career, is there anything that you think is really going to stand out in your mind, like a play or a game? Or what do you think you and a lot of people will first think of when you think of those two guys? Yeah, I mean, you can, I mean, Trey Long, Trey Long, you can just say what, you know, what play you want to pick out. And um, I, I think there's a ton of them. Uh, Grant Morgan, the one, you know, how many tackles has he made? Three or four hundred. The it's none of the tackles that I will remember. It, it, it's the interception against Ole Miss, and you know the, the run he made, where he suddenly turned into a running back. You know he didn't look like a linebacker as he was stiff arming people and weaving. And you know what did he score from thirty five or forty yards out? I mean to, to me that just was a fun play, and I you know I think it's. Uh, uh, I bet you that he'll tell you that it's a, a big play in his career too, and he's dropped some. His arms are sometimes they're they're beat up to the point his hands are probably mangled. His, you know, a linebacker's hands are kind of like a catcher's hands. You know, too many foul tips, too many hits. You know, you don't have the hands to <laughs> to catch stuff. Um, but yeah, and Traylon is. Uh, you know, it's funny we we've had a we almost had a typo in the magazine this week. Uh, somehow something was written where his name was mentioned as Trey Long, L-O-N-G, at the mm-hmm. end. Ooh. And, I mean, what a great – I mean, that if you could uh, hang a nickname on him, that's it, Trey Long. I mean, it's uh, the basically, you know, long fingers, long runs, long catches, you know, amazing one-hand catches. I, You know, the he's had so many one-hand catches, you can't say, well, this is the one. Uh, I you know, I think for some people, the memory, I think they put out a video of a, pra- a catch that he made early in his career at Arkansas of a one-hand catch in practice. And I think they did it because he did it every day. Mm-hmm. And But, yeah, he's uh, – I guess he's just kind of a human highlight reel. I just think of him catching that ball at the 48 last week and outrunning the entire Alabama secondary yeah, the rest of the way. he's done that some other times too, yeah. But when it happens – it happens against happen- Alabama. There was just something to that that just stood out. Yeah, I think there were, you know, 100,000 people thinking the whole time somebody would catch him, but right. it never was close, was it? Yeah, it really wasn't. Um, it's I know it's a different offense and a different set of receivers, but Mizzou's got a really good quarterback. They protect Basilak really well. They, they're going to they're gonna look at the Arkansas secondary as a deficiency and try to attack them, don't you think? And I, don't, I know Beatty's, like, huge for them, but... I feel like they'll go at this Arkansas secondary. Yeah, well, here's the here's the deal, and it's the same general thought that Arkansas has. If you run it well, pass protection becomes somewhat easier because you've got you've got to gear up to stop the run, and you're not you're not going to put guys down in pass rushing sets and say sick them because those guys have got to they've got to protect the edge, and if there is a running back that, that is impressive turning the corner with power in the SEC, it's that guy. And he can get to the edge, and then when he does, he's very difficult to tackle because you're reaching for him, and an arm tackle does not work. So that that kind of diffuses the pass rush, and it makes passing easier. And I think that's what Arkansas does. That's why their sack totals for both schools go down, is that they're running games. Play action pass is a great weapon when when stacked right behind a good running game hey clay i hear the music so we gotta go i hope you have a great thanksgiving same to y'all appreciate y'all having me it's thanksgiving and we all know what that means football and nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting bet online has you covered for all the holiday season more props odds and lines than ever before bet online remains your number one spot for all sports action this thanksgiving head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus with the promo code believe to receive your bonus that's b-l-e-a-v 
to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. BetOnline has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. 